Min bërma zonë edhe zëtrin jeni me argument plus këtu në Televizion 21, ndërsa mësafir special kemi sonë të zotin Samuel Zhbogar për fatsusin e posaqëm të bashkimit Evropian për Kosovën me të cilin do të diskutojmë rrëth qështje së krimit dhe themelimit të tribunalit të posaqëm për Kosovën apo gjykate speciale me një, me një theks të veçant edhe me luftën ndaj korupcionit dhe mandate që do të ketaj. Mësë Zhboga, good evening and thank you very much for being here, sir. Hi, good evening. Thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure. Why is it so necessary for Kosovo to have a court, a special court, dealing with the war crimes? Um, the Assembly uh, approved the adoption of the, or the establishment of the special court. Um, I think they followed uh, the, the logic or the, the advice uh, that there is a need for this court to clarify uh, all allegations that are in the Ikmati report, report of the Council of Europe for 2011. Um, when the report came out in 2011, ULEX took over the investigation and established a special prosecutor, um, uh, appointed a special prosecutor to deal with this issue and relocated that prosecutor to, um, to Brussels. Now, after three years of investigation, uh, he will come probably before summer with certain results of the investigation. Um, and since we, the European Union and ULEX took on itself the responsibility to manage and handle the report, we also have to foresee what is the next step in case there will be some indictments. And for that, we, we proposed and the Assembly approved that there will be a special court within the Kosovo court system. But special court because it's very complex, uh, there's a very complex allegations, it involves legislation of several countries. Um, Meaning what exactly? Legislation of several countries, legislation of, of uh, Albania, mm -hmm. uh, legislation that was applicable here uh, in Kosovo, uh, and also international uh, legislation applicable to, uh, to such crimes. Um, it involves a large number of witnesses um, that expressed um, willingness to participate in the trials, uh, but only if they're out of Kosovo. So that's why we propose this combination of court, mm -hmm. Kosovo court, um, but with a seat outside of Kosovo where all the sensitive proceedings, especially hearing of witnesses, will take place. Mm -hmm. So Hague has been tipped as the second seat. Has, has that been sorted out? Um, hasn't been uh, decided yet. This is something to be agreed between Kosovo and the Netherlands. And the uh, host country, most probably the Netherlands. The European Union had some discussion, initial discussions, uh, with its member states. The Netherlands uh, is, seems to be willing to host uh, such uh, uh, seat. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the end, it will need to be a bilateral agreement between the Netherlands and uh, uh, and Kosovo. Some, some people make a distinction between the court, the special court and the tribunal. Is there a difference? Well, tribunal is usually refers to international tribunal established by Security Council uh, or established by an international treaty. Um, and th that was the tribunal in The Hague. This we call, we prefer to call court, special court, because it's established within the Kosovo system within the Kosovo legislation, um, but as a special court, special court because it will have only international judges and special court because it will have one seat also outside of Kosovo. All right. Can you, why, why have we seen so much international pressure to make this happen, to set up this court, but very little has been said about the mandate? Um, the mandate of the court I think it's clear the scope of the court is the report uh, of Council of Europe for 2011. Um, so all the allegations or crimes that are listed in that report, these are the crimes that our prosecutor, Clint Williamson, is been now investigating. Let's see what he comes forward with. He will prepare this report uh, or findings, present the findings um, in, in, in near future. Um, Ambassador but Jacobson it will be limited by, by to June even. We don't have a date, okay. uh, but it, it's like in a in few months. Uh, somehow I, I expect before summer. 
um, and and but he's limited with with the report because we know when the report came out in 2011 it was a big bomb somehow that fell over Kosovo Indeed. in international relations it it put a lot of uh, bad image on Kosovo uh, rightly or wrongly but it 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 connected Kosovo with these crimes and it was used by those who don't want good to Kosovo as uh, portraying Kosovo in really the worst terms. Um, and that's why we said, okay, this is an important case that has to be handled differently from, uh, from other crimes because of this political magnitude that it, uh, it's bringing. And that's also one of the reasons why we were proposing this double seat because we have to make the court credible, um, but credible mostly to the outside world. Um, for all those who are waiting for this report, who are watching what will happen out of this report, and also those who are using this report against Kosovo, we need to have the court that, that is credible to, mm -hmm. to us, uh, to Kosovo of course, but also to them, so that nobody will challenge the findings from that court. Because, uh, let, let's for instance, if this was only Kosovo court, um, or if it was court within ULEX, uh, or it was handled by ULEX here in Kosovo, um, if people, if some were not happy, would not be happy with the results of the findings, they could always say, yes, this is because it was in Kosovo, witnesses were afraid to come because the seat was in Kosovo. That's why we had to make it credible um, uh, enough that nobody would challenge the findings of the court mm -hmm. um, once it's functioning and once it's, it's finished its okay. job. Well, you mentioned Mr. Williamson, Mr. Clint Williamson, the chief prosecutor in this case. What will he exactly produce? A report, an indictment? I mean, if he's a prosecutor, can he really produce a report? He cannot produce uh, indictment because, uh, because, there is no because there is no court. Okay, so what's the use of having a court without having an indictment? Um, I think he will prepare everything um, and present the findings um, in, in, in a couple this of months. This is the second time you call them findings. Findings, yes. Uh, he, you know, we have a report and you have crimes listed in the report. Indeed. But now, but the report was not done by, done by a judicial body, it was done by a political body, which is Council of Europe. So now we have a prosecutor who will go through the report, who talk to witnesses, who talk to many people. Now he'll, find, he'll prepare his own findings, if you want. What did he find? What kind of crimes did he find? Did he, did he find um, are credible enough to continue with prosecution? I think that's what he's probably going to present. Um, and the indictments will come, one, if there are indictments, they will come once the court is functioning. So is there any reason of creating a court which will deal with nothing if, there's, if there are no indictments? Um, it's, you, you have to have second step. You, you, you have to, you know, if we have an investigation, we have results of investigation, um, then you have to be prepared for the second step if there is a need for, uh, for the court proceedings. All right. And it um, was very serious investigation, three years of investigation. I cannot speak about it, I don't know but anything about it. Why do you call it serious it. then? Sorry? Why do you think they were serious? Why were they so serious? Uh, it was done seriously okay. uh, by, by a serious prosecutor okay. with a large team. Um, they visited many places, they had a lot of conversations, studied a lot. Um, so uh, I assume, I guess, mm -hmm. I believe it's a serious findings that he will no, I'm to saying present. this because it's like you know that there is something behind it, like you know that there will be one or two cases out of the findings of Mr. Clint Williamson. That's why I'm saying, is that really so serious that we will have indictment for sure? I cannot be for sure. That's after for prosecutors. But I would I would believe that uh, if the prosecutor uh, was um, uh, he was consulted on okay. the next steps, and if he believed that he needs the court 
uh, to present indictments, then probably he has some findings that will lead to indictments. Okay. Uh, well, now we have, on a paper, we have the legal route which has been set by the Parliament for the creation of it. When can we expect it to be functional? A date has been tipped, like 2015, because we can't do it uh, by, by then. Is it, is it something that is to be expected? I would, I would think so, probably. Uh, it depends, of course, uh, first on the bilateral agreement between Kosovo and, let's say, the Netherlands. Um, that has to be agreed and that has to be ratified in Kosovo and in the and Netherlands. So that has to, has to be uh, finished. Um, after, uh, later in the autumn, probably, there is going to be a need for some uh, legislation changes in Kosovo to accommodate this... Um, uh, what we just agreed uh, about this court with the seat outside, with international judges sitting outside. So this is, um, uh, is so our legislation will need to be aligned with mm -hmm. uh, with this. So there's still some work, let's say technical, it's not really technical, but there's still some legal work to be done uh, before the court will start functioning. Then, of course, um, uh, ULEX will appoint judges. Uh, so we'll have to establish a procedure to appoint uh, judges for this court. Probably we'll uh, have a special call uh, for, um, uh, for, for this court um, and uh, uh, an appointment of the judges. So that will take some time as well. So my guess, but it's only my guess, my Indeed. personal guess, is that probably it's only in the next year that the court will be up and running. We, we ju just went through the mandate. Could you be more specific? What will it really tackle, this special court, this special tribunal? What will it really tackle? Just the war crimes as alleged in the report of Mr. Dick Martin approved by the Council of Europe, or other cases as well, like organized crime, like corruption, or is it going to be just for the war crimes? Just for the war crimes and just for the crimes that are uh, presented in the report. Uh, we have ULEX who stays here for two more years. That was also agreed by the Assembly. Um, and ULEX will continue to do the ongoing cases, the cases that they started already. And there are several cases from war crimes to corruption and organized uh, cases that they started investigation already. And they will um, continue and hopefully bring it to a finalization before uh, before uh, the mandate ends in 2016. Um, but uh, this court will focus on the crimes that are presented in the report. In the report itself. If we look at, we have be, we've seen too many uh, arguments that it's the Kosovo's institutions who failed and that is why we have now a special court. Does it stand? I said before already that um, this court, because of the publicity uh, of this report um, in international arena, in, in international community, um, this court needs to be credible to primarily to international uh, um, community. I mean, to Kosovo, of course, and to the EU, of course, but also to international community to the United Nations um, and, and also to those countries who are not so friendly to Kosovo, who didn't recognize Kosovo. And um, some of them took this, um, uh, this report in the past several years um, to feed the prejudice about Kosovo. Um, so I think this is the prime reason why we need to, um, why we were pushing or proposing uh, for the court to have a seat outside, so that it's really credible enough to everybody so that nobody can challenge later on the functioning of the court. So that once this is over in the court, the whole report issue is over and behind us and behind Kosovo. Mm -hmm. uh, so that once and for all this is settled, that nobody will have a chance later on to, to really challenge and say, no, because this was done the way it was done, we want another court and retrial. The report itself by Mr. Dick, by former Senator Dick Marty, tackles high political figures in Kosovo. Will it really, will it really uh, tackle? Will this court really deal with all these names? 
Um, that depends what uh, will, uh, Clint Williamson will, um, will present as, as findings. Um, because the court will not deal with the report. Um, of course, the court is established on the basis of the allegations in the report. But the court will deal with the allegations um, and indictments proposed by prosecutor. And it's up to him to find out and to, uh, to present the case to the court and also to say who are the people who might be involved. Mm -hmm. So the report as such will not be, and the names that are in the report mm -hmm. might not necessarily be also the names that Klimt Williamson will present uh, in the indictments. You think f from uh, if um, Ambassador Williamson presents his report by June, early, early summer, before the summer, then by the end of the year, so we have a gap of six months, is that enough? for a court, for the special court to be established properly? And what about all the findings that will be presented to the, to, to the, to the public opinion? Uh, I would guess half a year should be enough. Let, let's see, I'm, 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 I'm not familiar how much time is needed for ratification in the Netherlands. Uh, how much time will be needed to have an agreement with the Netherlands on the details about functioning of this court? Because Netherlands will be hosting mm -hmm. the seat if they agree, if there is an agreement, they would be hosting the seat, so there should be an agreement with, uh, uh, with Kosovo, probably also an agreement with the European Union if we are going to pay for that functioning of that court in, uh, in the Netherlands. Um, so I don't know how much time that would need. I would think six months should be enough, mm -hmm. but, but let's see. For the other proceedings, like uh, selection of the judges, um, uh, I think that, that that's enough time uh, to do it. You mentioned the financing issue that was one of my, the issues to be discussed. Who will really finance it? Is it the Kosovo budget? Is it Kosovo's taxpayers or European taxpayers' money? Uh, I think there were some initial discussions within the European Union that we might be willing to contribute to the functioning of that court. So Kosovo will, although it will be a Kosovo court, it will not be financed by Kosovo, but it will be under Kosovo's jurisdiction. It will be part of the Kosovo court system, yes. Okay. Um, but it, what, what it means inside Kosovo's judicial, what, what does it mean? That it's part of the Kosovo court system. Yes. That, that is established within the Kosovo... Legal framework. Legal framework. Okay, so yes. that's... Right. Um, that's... That means that it's one of the courts in Kosovo. That's what we wanted to say. It's not an international court outside an international of Kosovo. Tribunal. It's not an international tribunal, but it's one of the courts in Kosovo. It's a special court because of the, all these specialities, including the seat outside. But, but it doesn't give account to anyone in Kosovo. Who will hold it accountable? I, I don't know if courts are held accountable to usually. But the, but they are the judges are appointed by the president of Kosovo, those who function within Kosovo. Yes, and uh, in the letters that we just ratified in Kosovo Assembly, we say that uh, ULEX judges, and these are also ULEX judges, uh, will be appointed, uh, selected and appointed by ULEX, but um, appointment will be confirmed mm -hmm. uh, by a president following the endorsement of Kosovo Judicial Council. Um, so there is envisaged procedure in the exchange of letters how our judges, ULEX judges, will be reappointed or confirmed, appointments will be confirmed by, by Kosovo within, so that they feel they fall within Kosovo system um, as well. All right. So somehow they, are, they have double appointments from our side as ULEX because they are paid by ULEX, they are part of ULEX, but also since they work in Kosovo and Kosovo system, especially now that will be embedded in Kosovo courts, they also get appointment from, from the president. Okay. The dissolution of the parliament has also been tipped by many political parties. Some see it as a result of the creation of a special court, but some disagree. Would you agree with it? Um, I hear a lot about uh, the solution of the assembly. Um, I don't think it's linked to the court because we've been hearing this since the municipal elections, since the local elections. We've, we've been hearing uh, that um, there will be uh, early elections. Uh, we all noticed that the assembly is not fully functioning, even though they function very well. 
uh, uh, but they have approved 89 election. votes I've told it's very very good vote yes and I think that uh, uh, I appreciate the the high vote because we all know and Ashton said yesterday herself that she's aware how difficult this was for Kosovo to approve we, we are very very aware of that and yet uh, we got 89 votes which I think proves the trust uh, of uh, Kosovo in European Union and also commitment to the European Union. I think that's how we read this vote as well. Not only the trust to the justice mm -hmm. and that justice will be found and names will be cleared, but also uh, trust in the EU and commitment to the EU mm -hmm. uh, since the people in the members of the assembly followed also our advice uh, that this court is needed. <coughs> But and it was necessary that the court get ratified by this composition of the parliament so that we don't leave it for an extra two or three months. Yes, because... Because by then we would have the report, or am I wrong? Uh, not, not that. Uh, well, first is the report. Yes, we need the clarity about the court before the report comes out. But also the, the mandate of ULEX was, uh, uh, is ending in June. Uh, and if then you have elections afterwards before you have a new assembly, it will take time, so it, we might have a gap. So what, what, what would happen then in June? That's why we need it for ULEX itself. We need it uh, extension for these two years to happen before the elections. Um, but otherwise, we see that since uh, local elections, there is a problem in functioning of the assembly. Uh, there's a problem with the numbers uh, uh, of, of the majority. Uh, we saw with uh, PTK uh, privatization that it, mm -hmm. it couldn't go through the assembly that there were simply no votes, not enough votes for that. Um, and, and we see that campaign started and it's really getting difficult. The debates are getting more difficult because everybody's already looking uh, into the election time and the votes, uh, voters. And, and, and so we see that the assembly has difficulties in functioning. Mm -hmm. And that's why we understand that there's this discussion now uh, about the early elections. Mm -hmm. When they will happen, I don't know. Uh, when is the right time? Is there, is there any timing that you have in mind when it would be better to happen? No, we don't have, we shouldn't have a, a view on that um, as internationals. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, our only view is that we want a functioning assembly and there's quite a lot of work to do in the assembly. We see SAA, we are concluding SAA negotiations, hopefully very soon. Um, and there will be a lot of things that will be needed when we will need a functioning assembly. Mm -hmm. um, so that's our priority, that we have assembly that functions well with clear majority mm -hmm. um, uh, that can approve uh, uh, laws. One of the priorities that they used to have was as well electoral reforms, but we're not seeing it. Electoral reform? That was one of our very big priority. Um, Mentioned as well in the European Commission report, progress report. Yes, yes, yes. We, we kept pushing for it, but it was never a good time. <laughs> uh, you know, it was, I remember when I arrived, it was end of supervised independence and everybody mm -hmm. was focusing on, on that and the assembly was functioning, was working hard on, on adopting the laws and everything. So they say, okay, wait, now we focus on this issue, which mm -hmm. was understandable. Um, then, of course, the dialogue with Serbia came, which also then took a lot of political air um, and, of course, uh, was difficult to deal with, 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 with electoral reform at the same time when these difficult issues with, uh, with uh, coming out of the dialogue were dealt with. Uh, so I think now, now would be a good time, but, of course, now we are going into uh, elections sooner or later if, if it's you know it's got they're going to Two happen this plus year or not, it's yes they're going to happen this year anyway um, what we are saying is that um, for us the best would be just to leave the reform for after uh, after the elections um, so they're not that much important the reform yeah. you you cannot do reform the proper reform the one we would like to you know you cannot do before elections even if they happen in the autumn, it's not enough time. The advice of Venice Commission is that you need at least half a year before. Uh, so at least half, six months time to inform the voters um, uh, and prepare everything so that, that there are no surprises uh, and confusion on the election date. Um, so that is already missed. That's why our preferred option would be that we just leave everything immediately after the elections 
when everybody's fresh, and then we even can bring a Venice Commission to help mm -hmm. with the advice, and not to help, but just to give some advice. They, they do a lot of electoral laws uh, uh, over, Kosovo, over uh, Europe, and they can give some advice at the end, of course, political leaders and assembly will, will approve. But we would think that the best would be to, to, to do that and not to do now some partial reform um, so close to the elections. Municipal elections at the same time show that if there is a political will, Kosovo is able to do very good elections. Uh, local elections were very good and we recognize that. Our observers who are here recognize that these were good elections. Um, so obviously they can be done also with the current system. Uh, if this the same political will of, of leaders of parties will be repeated for the general elections. And we will probably again have observers here um, so in order to encourage uh, good behavior uh, at, at the elections. I think would be that would something that we expect from Kosovo now that we see that it can be done very easily, mm -hmm. like it was done in November. Okay, but what if it happens at the same time when the report is about to get out? The, the findings of Mr. Williamson, the elections and the findings. Is there a problem? Uh, should I there be? Why, why should be there be a problem? Uh, I'm assuming that uh, Williamson will not come out with the names uh, of, since there is, there is, he's not coming with the indictments, he cannot come with names. Mm -hmm. uh, he might just present what kind of, he might present his own report. Uh, his own... A second report for the same well, issue. Well, I don't want to say report, that's why I was uh, avoiding the word report, because report is multi report, it's political report. Okay. Now is, this is judicial process, um, a prosecutor will present, will present what he found out, okay. what kind of crimes he's, he found are credible to prosecute. That's my guess that he's going to present, uh, but not, not, not the names. Um, so... I don't know whether that would uh, uh, influence the, the, uh, the, the election like campaign. The um, and campaign as well, indeed. Yeah, probably would be better if, if it doesn't happen during the campaign. During the campaign we should, you know, we Leave should avoid out. influencing, giving opinions or in whatever way um, uh, uh, bringing issues in. But it doesn't depend. Uh, we don't know when the elections are going to be. Mm -hmm. And I also don't know when the report is or the findings are going to be uh, done. Yeah. You, you said yourself as well, uh, during, uh, during Wednesday's um, session at the Parliament, uh, your Lex mandate as well was prolonged for two years. What do you make out of it? The ULEX mandate? Mandate for two more years. I think that we have a lot of, um, a very short time to prove a lot of. Um, we got two years um, to finish the cases that we started. Um, there's a lot of expectation in Kosovo that um, uh, we, we finalize, we come out and we tell now what are the cases that, uh, uh, that we will prosecute. Um, so we hope that, uh, or there's expectation those two years that we, we come to an end. To all those cases that we started, we come to an end. So at the end we see results what we did. Uh, because it's always with this um, court procedures, it takes a lot of time to gather evidence, to do the investigation and everything. So it, it takes quite some time before you come to the real trials. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's, let's hope that now we are in this last stage. It sounded the, like an excuse. It sounded like an excuse because many I'm argue that the EULEX is doing well, but not that well as expected. Yeah, that's why I was putting in the way I was putting because I hear a lot that people were expecting more from Yolex and since he's been here have for you, six Have you expected more? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a uh, prosecutor, I'm not judge, so I, I don't have any knowledge how things are done over there. Uh, I know it cannot be done overnight and, and certain procedures have to be followed. Uh, I am also told that many things are, do are being done uh, many trials have been held, um, uh, many people were, were, were indicted, prosecuted, um, and many cases are still ongoing. Uh, so in those two, two years, first we have to come out with all the cases that we, that we started. Mm -hmm. 
So we hope we'll see some results there. At the same time, we, we are handing over uh, responsibility to Kosovo since uh, Kosovo uh, uh, prosecutor is going to be head of SPRK uh, on all panels of judges. There will be majority of Kosovo judges. So actually, through these two years, um, we should also some do some on-job training or help monitoring uh, to these um, prosecutors and judges who are now who are going to take over, starting in June, uh, responsibilities from ULEX. Uh, that's why uh, I also have a special responsibility as USR mm -hmm. that I have to present to the member states um, a roadmap how in these two years uh, what kind of projects we as the EU office will come with in support of transition. Meaning um, uh, we are handing over to Kosovo uh, judges, prosecutors and the system but at the same time they want me to prepare a plan mm -hmm. how we are going to support Kosovo in, in that with twinnings, with consultants, with uh, trainings, uh, with in whatever way. Um, so we started discussions with the Minister of Justice, Ministry of Justice. Uh, they're preparing a, an action plan, um, what would be needed, and, and I think that that's how we, we will uh, work on it. So that in 2016, when is the expected end date of ULEX, mm -hmm. we, as the EU office, will be ready with other instruments that we have to help Kosovo deal with the rule of law. So is, it, is 2016 the phasing out of ULEX? Uh, in the exchange of letters, it is said that this is expected end date of ULEX. So expected, like really 2016, the ULEX will close in Kosovo. Uh, in 2016, the mandate that was just approved mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. the Assembly uh, runs until 15 of June 2016. Is it realistic? Uh, we'll have to see in two years' time, but that's what we agreed. I'm asking it because you said that you are uh, you're in your in the roadmap of yours. You're yes. thinking of how to mentor, but you didn't mention the phasing out. That's why I'm saying, is it really realistic? Because it's not on your plans right now. Phase up till uh, we we up see till we see phasing out these two years that we are entering now. This is the phasing out of ULEX because we will take no new cases. All new cases will be done by Kosovo. We also will be. Is that a good or bad news? I think that's good news, actually. Well, it, it took a lot of negotiations and discussions. Uh, it's good that Kosovo is eager to take the ownership. Uh, it was eager from the first beginning. To take it, the ownership, yeah. to take over. Even from the first beginning, they wanted, I mean, Kosovo leaders, even back in 2008, after the independence, they were like, we are ready even now to get fully independent, but still we yes. agreed for have a supervised independence. Yes. That's why I'm saying that because we were even then. The other side has to be convinced as well that you are ready. Okay. And I think these two years, uh, we were convinced enough so that we handed over all new cases will be done by Kosovo. We will just clean our drawers, you know, we'll, we'll clean our closets um, and do the monitoring. So this is already the phasing out. I think this is the phasing out. We are also downsizing a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, That's why I was only, is it a money problem? Is it a budget issue? No. Because EULEX has spent like, how much did it spend since it first installed? It's more than 100 million a year that we spend for ULEX, for judges, prosecutors, uh, police, uh, customs, all the support mm -hmm. that we do through ULEX, 1,200 people at the moment, plus locals. Um, and that will then downsize, that will go down. Not because of money, but we understand this Kosovo interest and a Kosovo wish that Kosovo takes over and we somehow downsize. I think, I think it's, we have to look at it from positive and we are looking from a positive point of view because uh, there are other cases also in the region when the countries get used to internationals doing the job. Um, and as, as um, some of your people are saying, if, if I have to do something difficult and if, if I don't have to do it but international can do it, I'll ask international to do it, which is human. Um, so it reflects fear actually. It reflects much more fear rather than being human and saying we'll have the internationals doing our job. It's like you know, without taking really the responsibility of acting like a 
but that's why we also have to work on all other issues to make judiciary and, and the whole rule of law more independent, mm -hmm. uh, less political influence. That's why we will continue to be very critical about all political influence statements about uh, interference uh, with, with the judiciary. Because um, um, you have to make judiciary not be afraid. I mean, you have to make them believe that they shouldn't be afraid. afraid. Um, of course, if there is a, if there are political calls, political pressure, if assemblies discussing it, if if um, parties are making declarations, this is this is a pressure on judiciary. Mm -hmm. and of course, then they fear to take decision because maybe somebody will criticize them, and when they will apply for certain positions, somebody will remember what they that they prosecute somebody, and and that's why we have to build also this part of political restraint on mm -hmm. interference with judiciary. So I understand it's everybody's interest to, to build more independent judiciary, and we are ready to help. Is that why we have a special court which will uh, be dealt with by Alexa? Uh, well, special court we have for these special reasons that I mentioned. Um, one of the, is it one of the reasons? The lack of independence? by the judiciary as it should be well in any any case i think such such case such such difficult case um is difficult to be prosecuted by even much more mature judiciary than uh than kosovo one which is kind of a new one uh, be because it's a complex complex case um, and that's why it's not even been prosecuted by by ulex itself but is this special prosecutor in Brussels now and will be a special court then also um, uh, partially uh, out of Kosovo. It's, it's this specificity that mm -hmm. I discussed before. Uh, that's the prime reason, I think, why we are going into this court. One of the details as well, well where will uh, all those uh, who will find guilty, otherwise we don't presume that anyone is guilty, but where will they serve their terms? In the exchange of letters, um, we all agreed, uh, now including Kosovo, that they will serve abroad. Abroad? Yes, they will serve in prisons abroad and detention will be abroad as well. So that has been agreed? This is in the letters, okay. yes. What else can we know about the mandate? Very little has been known. I mean, very, the opinion knows very little about the mandate. Exactly how will it deal with? Whom will? How will it be stuffed? Uh, where will it be based? Is it Pristina? Will it be? Will it have its center in Pristina? Its headquarters in a specific place? Or will they use the old building of of Eulex? How will it look like? Well, you, must, you must have an image of all of it, being that you are. Yes, you, but not all details. Like I mentioned that with the Netherlands, we don't have agreement yet how this is going to go. Um, there's just a slight picture. So there will be, um, of course, there will be a seat in Kosovo. Um, and now I'm, now I, I'm, 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 I'm going to say unauthorized because mm -hmm. uh, this is more my 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 guessing. Um, Ulex, uh, according to the new mandate, Ulex judges will sit in Kosovo courts. Um, so I assume that this will be one 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 of the Kosovo courts, one of the uh, one of the courts here in Pristina, in Pristina court or somewhere. They will have this special chamber or whatever it's going to be called, special court mm -hmm. uh, established for uh, some offices or for, uh, uh, for, for this court. Uh, how it's going to be staffed? Uh, it's going to be staffed with the internationals. No locals at all? I don't think there will be locals. No customers, I mean. No Bec no yes, uh, because of sensitivity of um, um, Proceedings because of the uh, because of uh, the witnesses. Um, I think we said that um, the witness hearings will be outside, but also all the filings of documents will also be outside mm -hmm. of Kosovo. How many people will it employ? This I don't know the number. You don't know. Pro no, I I don't personally know. I I think people know in Brussels, the ones who are thinking about the court, but we Hundreds? never came we never came out. Uh, uh, discussing that yet. I think that's all for discussions later on. No, I mean hundreds, tens, will it have less, more? Um, the prosecutor who is now prosecuted, he has a team around 30 people now. Okay. 
Uh, so, so you're assuming that same practice will be as well with special court? I think it's probably it's going to be uh, stuffed well, to say. It's, it's going to be a serious court. Um, but I don't know the numbers, really. No. Uh, uh, this I don't dare to, uh, to guess. <laughs> to guess. You mentioned yourself the, um, the stabilization and association agreement. Will Kosovo in any form be rewarded for its cooperation for creating the special court? If we put it even in a bracket, rewarded. I'm saying... For, yes. Go ahead, sorry. Uh, we, we don't do that. that um, uh, you know, you do this for us and we do this for you. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a corruption in a way. <laughs> we would <laughs> then corrupt <laughs> Kosovo to do uh, the court in order to get something. Um, no, but at the same time, of course, um, I think I would expect that member states would and should appreciate uh, the very firm message that came from Kosovo yeah, um, when the, uh, on Wednesday mm -hmm. from the Assembly. Um, and the very firm message was that this is a difficult decision, that people thought that it's not a fair and just decision for Kosovo uh, in the way how this court will be established. Um, Prime Minister even said in the Parliament it's an insult for Kosovo that we are asked to do something like that. Unfair even. even unfair. unfair. Yes. And we understand that. But at the same time, Member States saw that Kosovo decided to establish the court. One, to clarify uh, once and for all this Marti report that is damaging Kosovo, to show that there is nothing to hide. But we, I read it also as a message that, that you are listening to advice given by your friends, European Union and United States, and you're following advice even though it's very difficult for you. And that shows a commitment to the European Union and as well trust in the European Union um, as friend of Kosovo. Um, so I would expect that member states uh, uh, will, will, uh, will have the same assessment and reflect on that when they will look at the um, processes that we have with, uh, with Kosovo on SAA, on visa liberalization and other processes. Um, High Representative yesterday in her statement, she said at the end of the statement, she said that the uh, EU stands ready to continue to work with Kosovo on the European integration path. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's... But that's understandable at the end of the day. It's understandable that EU will definitely continue working with Kosovo, regardless if he did approve it to Parliament or not. Well, if he didn't approve, I wouldn't be so sure. All right. Uh, if, if he didn't approve, we would, we would take it uh, not, I think the member states, not we, the member states, I think, would take it as a, as a bad sign. You know, if we come and we say this is really important for us, also for us, for the European Union, because we took responsibility for clearing this report, and we believe this is how it has to be done. And if, if uh, Kosovo would then refuse, member states would say, well, do they trust us or not? They don't trust us, so how do they want to come to the European Union? They don't want to come closer, so let's wait a second, let's reflect. I think that if it was rejected, uh, I'm pretty sure that it would delay some processes. So it wasn't that, it, it was not a small issue to deal with? Yeah, we, we didn't, I don't think I spoke a lot about this before. Uh, the vote because I did, didn't want to look at like we're threatening with something. We usually don't do that. Uh, you know, the EU is, is a soft power. We don't threaten anybody. But we hear but say that we hear voices saying if you don't do it, then the United Nations Security Council would. Yes, well, of course, that's that's for sure. Because was it a bluff? No, because not. look, the court ca the the report came out. At that time, when they wanted to do a UN court, we said, no, leave it to us. We have ULEX on the ground. ULEX will do the investigation. So we took out um, of these debates, and ULEX will do the investigation. Now, if we, we try to establish the court, if it doesn't work, we'll have to go back to somebody, or people will be asking us, so what do you do now? And we'll say, well, sorry, we came to this point. We cannot establish the court. So if somebody else wants to go ahead, we are giving it back. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm pretty sure somebody would take it up. So it would mean uh, a failure pleasure. by the EU of establishing it, of making it happen. Will it be read that way? 
The failure? Yeah. Yes, it would be the failure of the EU. And that's Not why only of Kosovo. No, no. That would be the failure of the EU as well. And that's why I was saying that you know, member states would not take it so easy um, and probably would have some effects on, on continue to support European integration process of Kosovo. Of course, yeah. But on the other hand now, I think that yesterday uh, 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 it should really give the boost for, for, for this integration process. That's what I would, I would think. What about the visa liberalization? Uh, one thinks now that nothing will happen by the next year, not even next year, maybe. Yeah, I, a forgotten I, issue? No, 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 it's not a forgotten issue. People are just um, disappointed that it didn't go faster. Um, and that's why now um, it seems like it's not going anywhere, but it's going, it's, it's, it's moving. Of course, uh, it's been two years, yes, since we're discussing. We had one report, we had several missions. One is coming again now, beginning of May. Um, then we'll have a s another report. Um, I know you're fed up with reports, but this report. <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> no, I, I know how people. When I speak, people just think uh, it's always oh, a report. It's the same phrase. It's never ending. It's, it's, a, it's yes, the same it's, it's a process, never Indeed. ending process. But these reports now are very concrete, and they tell us. They will tell us what was done last year when they came. They said uh, very clearly: you need this, 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 these laws to change, these laws to approve. Was focusing on the laws. Kosovo did all that in the summer of last year. Um, so now they came to see how this is being implemented. So now they will came again with the report and they will say, okay, this, this, this is functioning well, we don't, want, we don't worry anymore. Maybe they will have certain issues that they can say, we'll still need to see some improvement of these areas. I mean, it's always a guidance where you need to go next okay. toward the exit. It somehow guide you to the exit, the exit being the visa But it took travel. so long, it took so long. I mean, everyone, if you ask anyone in the street, they would say it takes too much time. It's a long process. It's a long process. How come that only Kosovo is doing that long? No, the others also did it uh, probably the same time, but they did it earlier. It, it, it happened early in 2008, 2010. And it happened uh, in a time when it, there was no election at the EU. And many other things. It happened at the time when there was no crisis in the EU. It happened in the time when there was no so much immigration coming across the Mediterranean Sea. Um, was different EU at the time. You see now how uh, we are seeing now in these elections for European Parliament how mm -hmm. the countries are changing. The political situation in countries are changing. There are certain forces who are getting stronger now, especially the, the anti-European forces in several countries are getting very strong. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this reflects in the European Parliament. But these, all, these are all the things that are affecting Kosovo process. Also the experience with some of your neighbors uh, is also affecting because there are some bad experiences, a lot of migration, Which asylum is? seekers uh, from Serbia, from Macedonia, those two primarily. Uh, a lot of asylum seekers who come to the European Union and then take use of this, you know, you declare that you're an asylum seeker and before they proceed, process your application, it takes several months mm -hmm. and during that time some countries are very generous in, in support, financial support that are given to the asylum seekers. Um, and that's, that experience that EU member states have with the region, so now they're much more careful. That, that's why they also just, um, introduced the possibility to revoke the visa free travel, visa travel, which was not before. Now it's there. Um, did this all somehow plays against Kosovo or is delaying the whole, the whole process of Kosovo. Mm -hmm. But I have to make it clear that even when we come to the visa free travel, right. these people will be able to travel free without visas, but that doesn't mean that they can get a job in the European Union. No, these are tourist clear. travels, mm -hmm. uh, visiting friends, visiting uh, relatives and so on. Uh, but sometimes people in Kosovo see it as a possibility to go out and get a job outside. That's, that's not what this visa free travel will Are you happy with how bring. the current government, I have to call it current since now we are, everyone is talking about the dissolution of the parliament and we are going to early elections. So the current government, do you, how do you see it? How did it perform, especially in the term of reaching out to the people and telling them that, listen, you can't go and get work in EU even, we are, even if they are lifting the visas. We have a minister which is claiming all the time that we are 
we stand ready, but we have fulfilled other criteria that has been asked by Brussels. So now, why aren't they moving forward? Uh, you know, it's the same thing as before with um, we taking responsibility in the rule of law areas. Uh, you might think that you did all the criteria, but both sides have to agree, especially because we are lifting visas to our countries. Um, so that's why we need to get this assessment of the mission, this report that will tell us um, how far Kosovo came. And Kosovo came far. But you live here, you know it. Did, did they really fulfill the criteria? I think, they, Kosovo? I think they're doing uh, their best. Uh, I, I think that do the, 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 your ministries, Minister of European Integration, Minister of Interior, they're really doing a lot. Um, but did they meet all the criteria? It's not up to me to say. It's uh, up to the people from Brussels who are here and who are making report, who will, uh, who will uh, declare mm -hmm. what was that. Uh, many criteria, I'm sure, are met. Mm -hmm. And probably there are some that will still need to work together more. Uh, but let's, let's, let's wait for the report. If you, I mean, since you live here, we, we've talked about it, you live here, how would you tell an ordinary citizen, which is not into politics, when can he travel freely? When can he expect to travel freely? In one year time, in two years time? Because if we listen to the political parties and to the political leaders, we would have traveled like back, even back in 2009, without visas to European Union. Here I have to be very careful because uh, uh, member of European Parliament Lunacek was here a few weeks, months ago, and uh, she um, she answered some of these questions with a date, and um, nobody has the date. There is no way I can tell you when this is going to happen uh, because it's not up to me. It's not even up to the European Commission. It's up to the member states at the end. I think what we are aiming is that we can, as the European Commission, we have to be convinced that uh, Kosovo fulfilled all criteria, or more or less, uh, that we can recommend to member states that they lift visas, because at the end of the day, it's decision of member states of and the parliament. Of course. Uh, so I cannot commit member states to any date. I'll, I'll get um, demarches from uh, capitals uh, if I uh, give if any dates. Do that. So I can only encourage that um, uh, the government to continue the work and, and to be patient and to trust that the process is moving forward and, and to people to refrain from uh, emigrating illegally because that's also one of the problems that Kosovo has because uh, there's a lot of illegal migration. Um, asylum seekers from Kosovo as well, and that doesn't reflect well then in the, um, by the time when member states will have to decide about it. Um, so I would just appeal to, 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 um, to people, you know, you waited long enough, so a little bit more and you can travel legally. A little bit more. All right. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Zboga. It was a great pleasure having you on the show. And a great honor for giving us all these details. Thank you, thank you very much. I enjoyed a lot. Thank you for good questions. <laughs> it was a pleasure. Zonia Zotrin, kto embulem, ir kishim si musafir Zotrin, sam al žboga, per facusin e posačem, to baš kimi te Europian per Kosovo, me te cilin štjeluam, de to etra tribunalit porada šum te tira, te cilat pritetim sojno de dve nevi. Na te mir. Na te mir.